Hi there, this is Kelly Wayman from Finding Time to Create, and today I want to show you how to use the We Are Memory Keepers foil quill to add foil accents to a print and cut design. I'll also show you four different ways to fill in text so the foil quill adds foil to the entire inside instead of just outlining your text. I'm using the medium size foil quill tip with my Silhouette Cameo 3 and Silhouette Studio version 4.2. I'm going to show you a way to add foil lines that will hopefully translate well to the designs you try. Open this design called Flower Bouquet, which is number 127877 in the Silhouette Design Store. I'm not going to use the outer cut line, so I'll just delete that immediately. I've set my page size to letter at Landscape Orientation, and have selected my 12 by 12 inch Cameo mat as the cutting mat choice. I know I want to make this a print and cut, so I'll turn on my registration marks with the hotkey letter M, or you can turn those on in the third tab of the page setup panel. This is going on a card front, so I'm going to draw a rectangle for my cut line and will fit my entire design inside of it. It needs to be 4 inches wide and 5.25 inches high. I'll set that aside for later. Now we need cut lines, or sketch lines, for the foil quill to know where to draw. We've lucked out a little with this particular design because the designer created it in a way that it's not one solid piece on a background. If you want foiling lines, I suggest first trying to turn on a line color for any of your print and cut designs. Select the flower bouquet and choose a line color. Like I said, we got lucky with this one. We've already got lines that the foil quill can follow. Now this is important. The line thickness is showing 1.0 which means that black line color will print with the rest of the design if we don't adjust it. If you don't want your line color to print, set the line thickness to 0.0. .0. I also realized when I was working with this design earlier that some pieces are a very light cream color that may as well be white. So I decided to recolor a few parts by ungrouping the design, selecting just those pieces while holding my shift key, and using my eyedropper in fill colors to add green instead of cream. Group it all again and it's ready to be resized. If you don't come across a design that's already in pieces but is one solid image that can't be ungrouped, you'll need to trace it. I'll make a copy of this and turn the line color back to clear so you can see how to trace. Tracing looks for dark colors and intends to ignore lighter colors, so this will not work for every design you want to add foil accents to. Open the trace panel, choose Select Trace Area, drag a selection box around the image. The darker parts of the design will start to fill with yellow. To get more of the design to turn yellow, increase the threshold. This design looks pretty good around 95%, but that will vary with different designs. When you're ready, choose Trace. That will place a red cut line around everything that was filled with yellow in the preview. It does not mean that all that yellow is filled in. These are single lines for the foil quill to follow. Select just the red traced cut line by selecting the whole thing, then hold your Shift key while clicking on the flowers to deselect them. This won't be necessary on a design without previous cut lines, but we've got extra invisible cut lines on this design and only want to select the trace lines. Change the line color so it's different from the rectangle's red cut line. I'm choosing black. We'll use line colors later to tell the Silhouette machine where to cut and where to foil. Group it so the new cut lines stay with the colored design. Now I'll resize it to fit the card front I created with a rectangle earlier. About 3.8 8.5 inches wide leaves a little white space between the design and the edge of the card. I'll resize the other flower with the extra foil lines with the scale tool. That's all we need to foil one or the other of these flowers, but let's add a sentiment. To add a sentiment that will fill in with the foil quill instead of just drawing the outline, there are a few ways to do this depending on the version of Silhouette Studio you're using and if you have a curio machine or not. Option 1 uses the Line Effects panel. 
It's going to get really easy with the next release version of Silhouette Studio version 4.2, even if you're only working with the standard edition. I'll show you how to do this with the soon to be released Line Effects panel first. Open a new document, and the sentiment I want is Happy Mother's Day, which is number 132026 in the Design Store. Make sure it's selected. Open the Line Effects panel and choose the Spiral option. Reduce the spacing to its minimum, and now the sentiment is filled in with a series of tiny lines, which is what the foil quill will use to fill in the text instead of just drawing the outline. Change the line color to black, so it's going to foil just like the flower's line color. Copy and paste that to the flower card we've started, then resize it to about one inch and position the text before moving on. Option two uses the Curio Emboss panel. If you're using a version of Silhouette Studio that doesn't yet have those line effects, then not to worry. If you have a Curio that's recognized, even if you're going to do the foiling on a Cameo machine, check to see if your emboss effects are available and not grayed out in the emboss panel. Select the text and choose the spiral embossing pattern. Reduce the spacing to its minimum and you'll see the text fill with what looks like solid blue. This is just a series of tightly spaced lines. Again, this is what the foil quill will use to fill in the text instead of just drawing the outline. If you're not using your Curio machine, choose Release Emboss so your Cameo can recognize those lines. Turn the line color black so it matches the other foil line color. Copy and paste that to the flower card we've started then resize and position the text before moving on. Option three uses Designer Edition Sketch Effects. If you have Designer Edition or above and are still working with the version of Silhouette Studio that doesn't have line effects, you can use Sketch Effects to fill your text. Select the text and give it a blank fill color. Make it really large, something like 100 inches wide. Zoom out quickly with the double arrow and drag your mouse upwards. Choose a fill sketch like lines. Your text should fill with tightly spaced lines. However, those lines only look close together when your design is huge. If you zoom in close or shrink your design, you'll see the lines are not tight enough for a solid looking fill. In order to keep that tight spacing when we resize it, choose Release Sketch. If you don't release the sketch lines, those lines will be spaced too far apart when you shrink the design down. Now resize it to about one inch wide for our card and the tight sketch fill should stay. Change the line color to black and copy and paste it to the original card. Option four uses the internal offset workaround. If you're not able to access any of these advanced features, let me show you the workaround to fill in your text. It's a little slow and may not give quite as nice results, but it works when that's your only option. Select the text and give it an empty fill color. Resize it a little smaller to save some time. About five inches wide is good for this design. Open the offset panel, then choose internal offset. Adjust the distance to 0 0.010 and apply. Keeping that selected, choose Internal Offset, adjust the distance to 0 0.010, and apply again. Repeat this process over and over until the text is filled in and nothing becomes selected after applying internal offsets. Select it all and group it. Resize it to about one inch wide and change the line color to black so it's not the same as the cut line. Copy and paste it to the original card. Those are four ways to fill in text so it can be foiled. Now we're ready to print and cut, then add the foil. Now we're in the same place with our card no matter which method you used to fill in your text with closely spaced lines. The flowers are in color and have some kind of visible line around them that can be foiled and we have a sentiment ready to be foiled. Rearrange and align the elements within the red rectangle if you still need to do so. Also make sure that the registration marks are turned on. 
make sure you've selected the correct registration marks for your machine. Type 1 with the black square in one corner is for all models of Cameo, Portrait, and Curio. Type 2 is only for old silhouette machines like the SD and the original Quick Cut silhouette. I'm only placing one card front on my letter size page. If you try to fit more on your page, make sure no part of the design lies within the crosshatch areas on your work page, and you also need to make sure when you tape down your foil that neither the foil nor the tape lies within the crosshatch areas. The crosshatches don't print, but you need to consider that area off limits for any design, foil, or tape even after it's printed. That's why I'm only printing one card front on this page, although if I'm careful, I could get two. Let's make sure everything is set up in the send panel, because once you print, you should not change anything on the document other than turning cut lines on or off. You can start preheating your foil quill pen tip at this point. Screw on the silhouette adapter first. I use a power brick to power mine. We want to go to the Line Action tab, which I find the easiest to use when working with sketch or foil lines. You'll see a series of colored boxes on this page. There's a box for each line color on your page. Whichever boxes are checked, that's what we'll cut. When I say cut, that can also mean sketch or foil. You are responsible for making sure the correct tool is in the appropriate holder. To foil this in my Cameo 3 with the medium or light blue foil quill pen tip, I'm going to place the auto blade in my left or red tool holder and place the foil quill with the silhouette adapter into the right or blue tool holder. If you're using an older Cameo or a portrait, don't worry about the different tool holders. We're only cutting one thing at a time, so you'll have a chance to swap out tools when you switch from cutting to foiling. I'm going to cut first so I can feel where I need to place the foil later. Drag the red cut line, or the red square, up to the top to make it first. We don't need the no color box for anything, so leave that unchecked and drag it to the bottom of the list. For the red cut line, set it to Tool 1, Check to Cut, set Material to Pattern Paper Medium, or whatever your favorite cut settings are for the paper you'll print on, Action is Cut, Tool is Auto Blade. For the black cut line, or foil line, set it to Tool 2, and let's create a custom setting. With the black line highlighted, go to the three red dots which will open Advanced Settings. Click on the plus symbol at the bottom of the list. Click on the plus symbol next to Cut, and add a sketch action. Set Speed to 3 and Force to 3. Double-click to edit the name of New Material and type in Foil Quill. Click Save, and then exit out of this Advanced Material Settings menu. Back in the Line tab of the Send panel, change the material for the black foil line to Foil Quill. Choose the Sketch action. The settings you saved as the custom sketch setting for Foil Quill should appear below. Now we print. I'm printing on white cardstock with standard quality settings, but you can use whatever works best for you. Check the properties to make sure your printer page size and orientation is the same page size and orientation as set up in Silhouette Studio. Once that's printed, it's time to verify our cut settings. For a print and cut with registration marks, we'll be able to unload the mat between cutting and foiling because it can find its place again. I don't use the pause button when foiling because it doesn't leave room to easily put on or take away the foil so I'll only check the red box to cut first. Uncheck the black box. Load the paper on your mat exactly as you see it on the preview screen. Make sure the blade is in the left tool holder and the preheated foil quill is in the right tool holder and click Send in the software. Your machine will read the registration marks, then cut with the blade. When that's finished, unload the mat and place your trimmed foil of choice down against the design. If you don't have washi tape, use masking tape that's been dabbed against your clothes several times to reduce the tackiness. Your goal is to have the tape hold the foil as securely and taut as possible, but it cannot cover any part of the design to be foiled and cannot be within the invisible crosshatch areas. 
That's why I cut first so I can feel for those borders and avoid taping within my design area. When the foil is ready, load it back into the machine. Then uncheck the red cut line in the send panel and put a check for the black foil line and click send. The machine will read the registration marks once again and this time we'll use the foil quill to foil all those black lines we set up for foiling around the print and cut design and for creating the text. Unload the mat, remove the foil, and it's done. Don't forget to unplug your foil quill and let it cool if you're not moving on to another foil project. I'll add this to a card front I've prepared, and the card is finished. I hope this video helps you know how to trace designs to add foil lines and how to fill your text, or any other design, with a tight fill. Be sure to check out my blog, FindingTimeToCreate.com, for more tutorials using the various Silhouette machines and the Silhouette Studio software.